Welcome to What's Up in the Sky with me, Lead Night Sky Ranger Jeff, also known as Star Dad. This month we got a new mini moon giving us a temporary second moon. Jupiter returns to the evening sky and we're closing in on Mars. And we are finally returning to standard time for the winter months. I wonder how many people will needlessly die because of the time zone change. Why do we put up with the insanity of changing time zones? Standard time was created to form a reasonably wide area that would work under one time, which roughly corresponded to run sunrise and sunset. Yet we insist on one more hour of daylight in the spring, summer, and fall, as if we really get an extra hour. Sorry, but the Earth revolves in 24 hours and we don't get extra daylight because of a time zone change. Sorry? Not sorry for this rant. This is a sore point for me and we need to fix it. The time change will occur this year at 0200 on the 3rd. So join me now for what's up in the sky. Mercury remains very low in the western sky this month, barely clearing 2 degrees above the horizon 30 minutes after sunset. It will shine at magnitude minus 0 0.3 for the first couple of weeks and begin to dim on the 20th, ending the month basically disappearing at magnitude 1.4. Venus puts on a show this month at magnitude minus 4, an hour after sunset to the west and will remain visible for about two hours. This is an excellent time to check out our twin planet. Unfortunately though for Venus she didn't get enough water or produce life that could convert CO2 into O2 and thus though not the closest planet to the Sun she remains the hottest planet hot enough to melt lead. Let's look at the moon on the 13th when it's almost a full moon and look to the southwest and be on the lookout for mighty dragons. Aye, Captain, there be dragons on the moon. Find Mare Humorum, which is a relatively small ocean created by a massive impact. Look to the western end of the Mare and find crater Mersenius. This 50 mile wide crater should have a central peak but it's buried in the upwelling of the lava that flowed as a result of the impact. Head a little further west and south to find the two Henrys. Henry to the east of Henry Freres. Just to the south you may find the dragon's teeth which are only visible for a very short time. They are actually peaks of mountains. The Earth has captured a tiny asteroid and now has a second moon, a mini moon if you will. It was captured on the 29th of September and will be with us for 57 days before it picks up enough speed from orbiting Earth to once again fly free. This 33 foot long school bus asteroid is too small to see with either the naked eye or small or even medium sized telescopes. By the end of November we will be saying goodbye to our second natural satellite. Mars passes through Cancer the Crab and brightens through the month from 0 0.1 to minus 0 0.5 magnitude. The red planet rises at 2300 on the 1st and 2030 by the 30th. Its disk enlargens from 9 arc seconds to 12 arc seconds. By 5 a.m. it's high in the sky, a perfect time to observe it. I'll put the objects that may be visible in the calendar of events. Asteroid 19 Fortuna is our asteroid of the month. It glows at 10th magnitude making it a requirement to have at least a 4 inch scope. Its albedo or light reflecting is one of the darkest in our solar system rated at about 0.028 to 0.037. It was discovered in 1852 by John Hind. Its diameter is 225 kilometers, making it the 19th largest asteroid. Jupiter rises by 2030 on the 1st and 1900 by the 30th. It will brighten to minus 2.8 magnitude. Its disk will span a whopping 48 arc seconds. And since it will be in the dark sky for 15 hours, you could see a full rotation of the planet, which is only 10 hours. I will list transits in the calendar of events later on. 
Riding high in the sky at dusk is Saturn glowing at magnitude 0.8 in Aquarius, the water carrier. The rings have widened to their maximum since March at about 5 degrees. You will likely view them through a telescope looking like a line bisecting the large planet. Since Saturn reached opposition last month, its disk is beginning to shrink from 19 arc seconds down to 17. Look for Titan, a star that is close to Saturn at magnitude 8.5. The gasoline moon, as I call it, is rich in carbon and contains liquid methane and octane. Uranus reaches opposition on the 16th in Taurus the Bull to the southwest of the Pleiades. It will be due south at midnight, shining at magnitude 5.6 and be its maximum size of 4 arc seconds. Neptune resides in Pisces the Fish and shining at magnitude 7.7 .7 will require a small telescope or binoculars to see its tiny blue dot of 2 arc seconds. The moon will occult, in other words block, Neptune on the 11th. See the lunar occultations dot com iota slash planet slash planets for details. The Leonid meteor showers occur from the 6th to the 20th peaking on the 17th with an expected 10 meteors per hour. This meteor shower is from the dust of comet 55P slash Temple Tuttle which last reached perihelion closest point to the Sun in 1998. Comet C2023 Sushushan Atlas is visible in the early evening at the beginning of the month. On the 3rd, find it southwest at about 36 degrees high in the sky. It will stay in the same area throughout the month, shining at 6th magnitude. Even a small telescope will reveal its core. However, by the end of the month, the comet will fade to 8th magnitude as it retreats from the Sun. Enjoy this comet as there is not one predicted for another two years. Our constellation of the month is Pegasus, the flying horse. This large constellation is just south of Cygnus the Swan, which is also known as the Northern Cross Asterism, and just above Aquarius and Pisces. Our object is Charles Messier's M15, a globular cluster of stars shining at magnitude 6.3. It contains at least 100,000 stars and is located across the Milky Way from us. It is one of the densest clusters in the Milky Way and probably has a black hole at its core. To find it, look just to the north of Aquilus, the horse's head, and just off the nose of Pegasus. Our question of the month is what is a gnomon? A gnomon is commonly used as part of a sundial that casts the shadow. A gnomon was used by the Apollo astronauts to help them get their camera settings correct while on the moon. Here's your calendar of events. It's the orrery for mid-month. Enjoy the night sky filled with interesting planets and a comet viewable at a decent hour. Be sure to keep warm as we enter the winter months and clear skies.